All right, welcome to our Wednesday night service. We appreciate everybody that's watching, everybody that's come, and uh, it's a great day to serve the Lord. Got a lot to pray about, a lot of things that's going on, happening. I want you to remember all the families that's lost their loved ones, the Clark family and others that have lost their loved ones, a lot of people that are going to be tested and have tests run and surgeries and I tell you, there's just so much to pray about, and uh, uh, God knows every need today. Even if you can't mention their name or remember their name, God still knows who you, who's on your heart. So let's pray for one another, and let's pray for the lost. There's a lot of people leaving this world unprepared to meet God. So we want to pray about all of that. Pray the Lord would touch and help. All right. Um, uh -oh. We really had we we had a power surge there, I reckon. But uh, uh, I don't know why it did. You don't have to do it. Well, it'll take just a minute to get everything worked out. So I hope it didn't bust your ears too much out there. It just something that happened uh, happened not long ago and had a loose wire and uh, seemed like we got everything going back now. Y'all hear this through the speakers now. All right. Sorry about that, folks. But there's one thing about it. Uh, you didn't have to turn your hearing aid off or, or up or if you had it on. It's because you thought you done messed up. But let's do pray for the sick. Let's pray for the needs. And all of you that pray, have been praying for Joanne, she's here with us tonight. So we appreciate you praying uh, for her. And uh, pray the Lord to bless and help in all these needs. All right. Pray for our nation. Pray for all the things that's uh, going on and pray for the backbone that all, all of us need to stand up against the devil and uh, that thing's still buzzing a little bit so uh, we're going we're gonna to try to have prayer but if it buzzes it won't be me alright so let us pray and then we'll try to get started Father we thank you God that you allowed us time to gather we pray you might bless our, our most humble efforts tonight we do thank you for each one that's gathered for our Facebook audience. And God, we know there's much to pray about. And we're just trusting all these things to you, God. The tests, the doctor visits, uh, uh, where death has come. We pray, God, and the surgeries. Uh, God, they're just all in your hands tonight. We just commend them to you. And know that, uh, God, everything will work out according to your will. And Father, I pray for that soul wherever they are that's lost, that they might be saved tonight. Something might be said or done that would help them to come to the knowledge of your saving grace. Bless now, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to try an old song, The Lily of the Valley, if we can. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's the Tempts me sore through 
Decided to follow Jesus. Is that uh, have you? Amen. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I I know we're living in a world where people today have uh, turned their back on the Lord. But I want to follow Jesus. I'm gonna try it in that same key, guys. And, uh, uh, my eyes is kind of getting blurry a little today. <laughs> kids are y'all playing here you are all right here you be what are we playing 
Let's light a mine. What? Well, I tell you, you getting up here in the start of the song. Got the whole world in his hand. Y'all want to do the whole world in his hand? You want to? static that's coming through the uh, speaker. It's uh, something's bumped up and turned up or touching something and I ain't got time yet to figure out what it is. So maybe it'll make it through uh, the service. Um, where is that something at? <coughs> I had it a few minutes ago. There it is. Well, yeah, probably. Yeah. No, I ain't got it enough. <laughs> I'm going to do this song. Um, uh, I know a lot of you, it's kind of funny when I sing it, but it's uh, it was one of Betty's favorite songs. And I know she probably won't get to hear it because we can't nobody get up there to let her play it, and I'm still thinking about her. And it's talking about you're not as pretty as you think you are. And so many people think they look a whole lot better, and they're, they're a whole lot better people than what they really are. And that's what this song is talking about. You're not as pretty as you think you are. You're not as handsome as you dream by far. Things ain't the way they stay. Oh, 
She's in when I visited her at home before Charlotte knew her, but Charlotte knew her after she was in the rest home. She had two favorite songs. She loved to hear The Lighthouse, and she liked to hear this song right here when I come. It's called He Died Anyway. As he looked up across the crowd.
Isn't she glad he was willing? Amen. He died anyway. In the mind, he, he sure wasn't getting no bargain when he got me. But I thank God I got a bargain when I got him, don't you? Amen. You gonna sing? Oh, I come right on and sing. You sing in this one, I'm gonna sing in the one up there. You want to sing too? I like that song, I Don't Do Quiet. I mean, that's sure. It might be a song. touch and help and the families you know there's families that can't even get in uh, to see uh, their loved ones and so let's do pray for them and pray the Lord to bless <clears throat> I just don't know God's kid he made it my sister used to do this song uh, <laughs> Please. 
are the bride, Christ is the groom. With a crown to wear at the long white robe, we'll walk down the Oh, 
quit being a... I will say that. I love the Lord. And thank you for my Amen. We'll be in Revelation chapter 3. Do y'all love the Lord? Amen. Amen. Do you believe what God's Word says? Amen. Do we know things is going to change very rapidly, don't we? I hope we can say something to be a blessing to you in some way today. In the physical uh, aspect, uh, we don't feel the best in the world, but in the spiritual, we thank God for being saved, and for, for saving someone like me. We're going to read the last letter, our message is what it really is, uh, that was given to the church, uh, the church of the Laodiceans. And it'll start in verse 14. We're going to read the whole message. It's not that long, so don't get too excited. The Bible says, Unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things set the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thy work cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest I am rich and increased with goods and have neither nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel thee to buy me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich in white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes for thy sake, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man will hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and have sat down with my father in his throne. Now listen, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Let us pray. Thank you, God, that you brought us here tonight. Thank you for your blessings. Thank you for prayer that you have answered today and Lord, we know, God, that you're still working in our midst. The devil's trying so hard to discourage. And, God, we realize today when the devil's working so hard, there must be something good that's about to happen or already happening uh, in the midst today. Father, we do pray for the sick. We do pray for these requests that we've been asked to pray about. God, you know every one of them. We ask you to touch and you'd move in a situation in need. And God, save that one that's lost. Again, we ask to bring comfort to these that are bereaved tonight. God, fill their heart with your power. Speak uh, to the innermost of their being. God, that's what they need tonight. And Father, let this service bring glory to your name. We pray for your glory in Jesus name Amen uh, we have uh, we have mentioned uh, this uh, letter and this message in this church but the Lord has led me back there and I'm uh, I'm just uh, I'm just going to be obedient to the Lord I want to talk about the similarities of the day I, I want us to kind of look at what's happening today in reference to this letter, this message that God has sent to the church of the Laodiceans. Do you, do you ever get the feeling like that hearts today, they, they often treat the word of God just like a large salad, just a salad. You know, they, they just merely pick through it and, and they partake only of the parts they like. There's so many people today that is only accepting what they like of this Bible. Something that uh, don't come against their way of living or their lifestyle. They don't want anything that would threaten the way they live or they don't want anything that would cause them to consider the end that is coming. People want to uh, read through this book and think about heaven and never consider hell. People want to read through this book and, and think about all the joy and the glory, but they don't want to think about the pain and suffering that's also associated with the Word of God. Every day is not going to be a sunshiny day in our life. There's things going to happen. And it's not in our control. Do I, I ask myself, do, do we really believe that to ignore God's prophetic word and, and to close our minds to the certainty of its fulfillment is going to change anything? Do we believe it's going to alter the course of God just because we refuse to study it? We refuse to believe it? 
We refuse to preach it. We refuse to teach it. Do we feel like today that that's going to change anything? Only the foolish could feel that way. And many are foolish tonight, aren't they? We can't change the direction of God's will, but we can certainly change ourselves. We can change our life that we might be found in the center of God's will. And we can hold steadfast to our profession of faith and, and take every promise and every woe of God seriously tonight. Listen, every promise and every woe all the things that bring the good times and the things that's going to bring the bad should be taken seriously. The same God said both. The same God is going to bring forth all things that he has said in his precious word tonight. Amen. Uh, the church today a little bit confused because for years they've had it so good. And now God, friend of mine, God has told us all along that things was going to change, but churches have just not prepared themselves for the change. They found themselves in the middle trying to pacify both sides. There's only one side to stand. That's the right side today. There's only one way to take it. That's the right way today. Are you listening to me? But we're finding people that's so confused. They're, they're not to be confused about. If God calls it sin, it's sin. I don't care if you're doing it or I'm doing it. Right. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. There ain't nothing to be confused about today. A lot of people are trying to pacify things that are going on because uh, uh, they're kin to them or they know them or whatever. They, may, it, they don't mean anything to God. Sin's still sin no matter who's doing it today. Amen. I better hurry on. The wolves need to be taken seriously. Just as the promise. You see, God hadn't given his word uh, to threaten any of us. God's not trying to threaten us in this book. Somebody said when you preach hellfire and brimstone, it's a threatening God. I, 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 it's not a threatening message. God didn't uh, had no intent of threatening us. Friend of mine, uh, his, his intention was that we would know about what's coming. That we'd have an understanding. And in doing so, that he has given us, friend of mine, a way of escape through his son, Jesus Christ. God, how can you know what's coming if we don't get in this book? If we don't preach and study and testify and witness this book? You will not know what's coming. Amen. Listen, if you're foolish enough uh, to believe what the news says, but you, you deserve what you get. You need to know what God says today. Are you listening to me this evening? Friend of mine, the God has been gracious and loving, giving unto us time to weigh out for ourselves all the do's and the don'ts and the yes and the no's and, and decide in what direction our heart wants to go. God's been very gracious and loving to you and me today that he has given you another opportunity to get right with the Lord. Another opportunity to repent of whatever's wrong in your life. He didn't have to, but he did today. And he did it all through love. Amen. You know, for years it's been said that uh, don't read Revelation because it'll scare you to death. Have you ever heard that? Uh, most people have heard that. Many have chosen uh, to entirely omit the teachings of Revelation. But why? Why? Friend of mine, God has given unto us through John a step-by-step -step blueprint of our future. If you want to know what's coming, you can find it in Revelation. Amen. Everything, God has laid it out just as plain as the nose on your face. We have said that before that these seven letters or messages, and this is what I feel, they were sent to seven different churches and they're meant to reveal Seven time periods. And actually, uh, the church of the Laodicean uh, started somewhere around 1900. You can trace back uh, time periods and you can see how these things played out spiritually in those times. You know, the Lord revealed in each of these the spiritual condition that would be found as time marches on. How do I, why do I believe that we're living in a church of Laodicea? to sin? Well, we'll get into some of that in a minute. Because of the similarities, because of the things that are in our world, because of the things that are happening, 
friend of mine, that go right along with what God said would be happening during this time of the Laodicean church. The message that Jesus Christ sent. I believe you can find these similarities in, in all these churches uh, 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 that I've talked. There's seven of them. I believe you can find some of those things in all the churches in the world today, but I don't believe we're stuck in the middle, as some people say. There are people that are teaching and preaching that we're somewhere in the middle of these churches. I don't believe that. I, I, there are people out there today that are preaching that we're in the hour of tribulation. I don't believe that. You know, I'm going to say it, go ahead and say it. When uh, tribulation will introduce itself. Amen. You won't, there won't be no question in anybody's heart or mind when tribulation comes upon this world. Amen. I'm not planning on being here. Somebody said, what if you are? Well, the same God that promised he'd come get me is the same God that is my shepherd. So if I'm here, then I believe God will take care of me. But I'm not looking to be here. Amen. Amen. Are you? The tribulation will introduce itself. I don't believe we're living in the hour of tribulation, but I do believe that we can compare uh, the spiritual condition of today, friend of mine, and the spiritual condition that the Lord was speaking about that would be found in the church of the Laodicean, and we can come to an understanding that our present day is the last church era. The last church era. And it's preceding the tribulation period. A time when God's wrath is going to be poured out on the world because of unbelief. You don't want to know why tribulation's coming? Because of unbelief. You want to know what the benefit of tribulation is? There'll be no unbelievers when God gets through. Amen. Listen, there'll be no unbelievers. Oh, there'll be many die and go to hell. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying there ain't going to be no unbelievers when God gets through. Amen. Well, there'll come a time when, when people are going to want to die. They can't even die. Did you know that? Torments and anguish and suffering is going to come on the world. That death won't even come to them. They're going to be that way. They're going to cry for the rocks and mountains of all on them. Amen. That's how fearful these things are going to be. The Bible talks about man's heart failing them because of fear. Fear. Amen. Hey, uh, there's nothing more fearful than to know there's something coming at you and ain't one thing you can do about it. Amen. And when God begins to open up heaven and pour out all of his wrath, there ain't going to be nothing that nobody can do about it today. Amen. Let me hurry on. I believe we're living in the prelude of the rapture. And a lot of people don't believe in the rapture, but I do. The time when the Lord himself, the Bible says, shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. That's 1 Thessalonians 4 and 16. And the Bible says that the dead in Christ shall rise first and we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds, called up to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. And he said, Wherefore, comfort ye one another with these words. If the devil's got you in anguish, confusion, and turmoil, then turn over to 1 Thessalonians 4 and be comforted in the fact that the Lord himself is coming and he's coming for you. And he's going to be a meeting in the air. We're all going to be with the Lord forever and ever and ever. Praise his name. Ain't you glad tonight? I believe the purpose of the rapture is to rescue all that is accepted the gift of salvation from the judgments that's coming. That's the purpose. I believe God's coming to rescue us. Amen. Amen. There wouldn't be no rest, need to rescue out if there wasn't something threatening, would they? But there's something threatening. And it's the tribulation. The judgment of God. And I believe that's why God's going to rapture us out. He's not going to just take us out from part of it, but I believe he's going to take us out of all of it. Amen. Out of all of it today. We've been given evidence, a uh, certainty, friend of mine, that uh, are crying out all around us that time as we know it here is running out. Time is running out. A uh, man is his worst enemy. And friend of mine, uh, they have made uh, all of these bombs and things of massive destruction. Look at, at what's happened with COVID-19. And, and listen, it 
will get worse and it can get worse. Amen. They can take some old uh, uh, antiquated uh, missile that has been set aside and, and fill it full of, uh, of chemicals and germs and, and set off several hundred miles from the shore of the United States and drop it in the middle of New York or someone else and millions of people will begin to die and it will spread and spread and spread. The devil has found a way to get his foot in and destroy life. There have been many people died with COVID-19 that has died and gone to hell. The suffering in the world did not uh, I'll rescue their soul. There's only one rescue for your soul and that's the blood of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Are you listening? It's going to get worse. People just don't want to believe today, do they? Isn't it sad how hard that God has tried to warn the people and yet they've grown cold and hard and, and their ears are deaf and, and, and hearing the word of God? Hey, they boldly mob God. They mob God with their phony prayers. With their phony words to impress people. I'm not impressed by the devil's crowd tonight, are you? Not one bit this evening. The message was sent out by Jesus. He's the speaker and he declares what he sees. He, he's not declaring what the church wants to, uh, people to believe. The Lord in this message is telling them what he sees. It's what he knows. Amen. The Laodiceans had works. But they were being presented in a in a lukewarm manner. They were neither hot, they were neither cold. You might say they they were merely giving what they want when they wanted and expected God to be overwhelmed by their efforts. So many people ain't praying in so long. They they think that when they finally break down and pray, God ought to break out in tears, right? They, they thought they were, God ought to be overwhelmed by their, their efforts. It was all self-satisfied things. Amen. Amen. Self-satisfied. Needless to say, the Lord wasn't impressed at all. And God ain't impressed by hearts today that are not true or not real. I, I've seen them come to the altar and pray and, and shout down the aisle and, and go out and, and, and a friend of mine get drunk and live like hell and won't come back in and shout the next time. I, I can't stand that. Amen. Amen. You're not their judge. Well, you got to read this book a little further and watch y'all read that. So many of you stop when it says judge not that you be not judge. Finish it up. Amen. Finish it up. Study the word of God and know that God has given us the right to judge the fruits on the tree no matter who the tree is. Amen. God has given us the right to judge ungodly, wretched judge, uh, 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 hearts and, and doctrine. And false prophets today. Amen. And mockers. Amen. So don't you stand there and point your finger at me, you bird dog. Amen. God's word is what we stand by today. Amen. We ought to all want to live but where the word of God is the witness of the life we're living. Amen. Not just speak it from our mouth, but live it in our hearts. I better get back to this message to the Laodiceans but it sure does fit us so well today doesn't it Amen. the Lord would wasn't impressed but rather he said that friend of mine he couldn't stomach their offering more so he said I'll, I'll spew thee out of my mouth spew thee out of my mouth do you feel like God's been spewing some out of his mouth today Wayne, I believe every church that's trying to mix a, a friend of mine, the, the Bible and the Koran is being spewed out of the mouth of the Lord. I believe every church today that are trying to compromise and condone and, and accept these immoral things in our world and bring them uh, into, the, I believe God's spewing them out of their mouth. God can't stomach that kind of stuff. Are you listening to me today? Marching under the banner of religion. When they don't even know God. Don't think today, friend of mine, that wouldn't you feel like that this message would have opened up their eyes? 
And God sent it. It was a willful cry for repentance. Don't you think, or, or calling for a willful cry of repentance, don't you think that people would want to repent when they saw just how distasteful they are to the Lord? Amen. We're living in a time when nobody wants to repent. Everybody justifies what they're doing. Amen. If they bust in this church tonight, it's, it's supposed to be peaceful. It ain't peaceful when they walk on the parking lot and it sure ain't when they bust through the door. Amen. Amen. Then if they come to your house, everybody's justified. Amen. Are you listening? People today are, are, are not even thinking about repentance because nobody stands up and tells them they need to. Now's not the time to, to hide in your closet. Unless you're praying. Now is the time to stand up and show the world who you believe in. Is what you got real? Do you think the devil has more power than the God you serve? If you got more faith in the devil than you have your God, then you're serving the wrong one. Huh? Amen. This is about as plain as I can preach it tonight. I wonder what our forefathers would have preached. I wonder about all of you that talk about your grandfathers and great-grandfathers and all of those that used to preach the Word of God. What would they be preaching today? Amen. What would they be thinking today? Amen. I'll tell you what they'd have done. When that bunch marched into town and trying to tear and rip snort, they'd have tied their mules up back at the barn or, or, or loaded up in the wagon and they'd come to town and, and they'd have took back what belonged to them and dedicated it back to God. They gave it to them to start with. Amen. 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 This message is hard to the Laodicean. It's hard to us. But we're there. We're neither hot. We're neither cold. And we're trying to offer God things that, that, that God's not impressed with. Amen. God's not impressed with the number in the church if the church has not got a heart for God. God's not impressed with a great tithing if the tithing doesn't come from hearts that are dedicated to God. Are you listening? He said, I'll spew thee out of thy mouth. Amen. They had a profession, but it was of their own making. <laughs> How many people today have a profession, but it's something they made up of their own? Doesn't it surprise you that this message to the Laodicean church is a self-portrait of, of many today that has become consumed in their own ways. They're creating their own doctrines. They're ignoring the word of God and making up the rules as they go along according to what they need at the time. Amen. Amen. They throw everything in the Bible out. They say I'm rich, is what the church here said. I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. So many people are that way today. Not even God. Have you ever wondered why millions of dollars, millions of dollars are spent on mega buildings that are only occupied for three or four hours a week? You ever wondered about that? You might say this is God's house. Is it? The Bible says God dwelleth not in the tabernacles made with the hands of man. Is it God's house? What could we build that could possibly honor it, be honorable enough for God to live in? I'll tell you what. He made his own tabernacle in the hearts of mankind. That's where God dwells today. You believe me? Amen. I'm not saying that our places of worship shouldn't be well maintained and represented as God's church, but you've got to ask a friend of mine as you see what's going on, who are we trying to impress? Who? Amen. <coughs> Things have got out of hand. Ch hungry children in America, all over the world, and billions of dollars are being spent to impress somebody besides God. You want to impress God, have a, have a heart of love. You want to impress God, love your neighbor as yourself. 
You want to impress God, amen, uh, uh, when you go and be a blessing to somebody, let not this hand know what this hand is doing. Huh? That's old-fashioned, preacher. Yeah, but God's still in, did y'all not know God's still an old-fashioned God? Amen. He's more old-fashioned than we are because he ain't never changed from uh, whenever. I, amen. He's always been. He's always been the same. I better hurry today. Amen. We're his tabernacle today, aren't we? The Laodicean church was self-exalted. And this is a picture of today's world. Their eyes were full of their own accomplishments and they couldn't see the facts. Couldn't see the facts. Why do we sweep dirt under the rug? Why? Well, we're trying to keep it hit from the eyes of those that are looking below surface level, aren't we? But it doesn't solve the problem, does it? Hiding the dirt doesn't do away with the dirt, does it? It never does. It just hides it for the present time. Friend of mine, these were hiding the facts by being so engrossed by self worth they even said, we have need of nothing. Nothing. We're, we're so wrapped up in the world, we're so wrapped up in our program, we're so wrapped up in our gimmicks. God ain't even welcome in a lot of places today. What are we seeing today? Is there a need for, friend of mine, for God to be portrayed? I believe they are. Amen. You know what? Look what they're looking at today. They're wanting their church doors closed. Would you have thought you'd have lived in America when they want the church doors closed? But God was teaching that it's going to come. Why? Because the less that people can assemble together and get the truth, the more easy they are to believe a lie. They're easier led away. They crumble at the power of the devil when they're not strengthened in the power of God. They want to close the doors of the church. Hey, they're burning the Bible because we have a president that's not ashamed to be seen with one. Ain't that something? Burn it! If, if, if I went out there and burned the Koran, one preacher was going to do that one time and got life threats. Yeah. You hear me? But they burned the word of God. I tell you, if they don't get their heart right, the, the flames of hell is going to be hotter than the flames of that Bible that they burned and stood out there and warned it, had their hands over it and mocked and, and, and made fun. I bring the mind of the president and of us Christians, the fires of hell will be hotter than that tonight. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? Amen. This is right under our nose. Nobody wants to understand it today. It must be okay. It ain't. It ain't. They're persecuting those of us that believe and want us to live a Christian life. You know, the cry is for socialism. It's emerged today and it's deceiving the hearts of many because they don't know what socialism is. Did you know that? There's so many of our uh, younger generation, not all of them, but there's so many of them that's had everything given to them so long that's never had to get out and work and put their nose to a grindstone that, that the thoughts of the government keeping them up for the rest of their life just sounds good. They don't know what it is. They don't know what communism is. They don't know what it means that, friend of mine, you can't do nothing without permission. They don't know that. That's why God wants us to preach and stand on these things tonight. Most don't even know it. There's so many friends of mine that live with the attitude that they have nothing, need of nothing, especially the Lord. 
But the Lord saw beneath the serrated and revealed unto them what was really present. Friend of mine, he said they knew not that they were wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. My God, what would God write to America? What would God write to the church? What would God write to this church? What would God write to your heart if God sent a message to you today? We're not what we think we are. Are we? God said they were wretched. He saw them for who they really was. Miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Nothing's hid from the eyes of God. He knows the heart. The world today is living by their own standards for the most part. They're, they're just making up there. As they go along, as I've said, living by their own standards. And they expect to be justified in doing so. I thought about this. Self-approval does not ensure God's approval. Amen. Just because it feels good to you don't mean it's right with God. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Amen. What a woeful cry that reality will bring forth from the hearts of mankind when God begins to reveal all these things. What a woeful cry. Amen. And listen, things that are getting done and being covered up and washed under the table, they are still on the books of God. Amen. There's still a record book of God. Man can forgive, man can pardon, man can forget, but God doesn't forget. Amen. Are you hearing me today? Amen. God will forgive past sins, but God will not forget any Amen. that has not been forgiven. Do you hear what I'm saying to you today? That's hard, preacher, but it's true, ain't it? There's going to be a woeful cry when reality sets forth. We see so many buildings with signs on the outside, and, and it, those signs allude to the, to the proclamation of being a church. A church. There was a time, uh, you, you might remember, Wayne, uh, uh, Aaron might remember, and I don't know some of the others, but there was a time when, when you go through Lafayette, every empty building had some kind of a sign on it that was a church. Why not have the three people going? I never could understand that. I never could understand why they had uh, uh, 50 or 11 uh, uh, churches that uh, had two or three people. Why can't God's people just come together and worship God? One get mad, another get mad. Amen. They, they, they get mad. At, hey, I, I believe you ought to stand against it. If the preacher ain't preaching, then stand against it. If, if the church ain't God, they stand against it. But if there ain't nothing wrong with the church and everything's wrong with you, don't go start no church in your basement just because you ain't right with God. Amen. 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 Listen to me. As I say again, self-approval. Doesn't ensure God's approval here tonight. Amen. The question is, does the Lord, friend of mine, meet with all of these that say, church, church? Is he worship? Is he praise? Do their teaching offer unto the souls a, a biblical change? There are those today that believe just because their name is on the church roll that they're automatically going to heaven. I hate to break your bubble, but uh, bust your bubble, but you ain't. Amen. You can have your name on every church roll that in this county, but that won't get you to heaven. They ain't near one of them churches good enough or powerful enough to save you. All we can do is present the gospel message, and through the gospel message, the Holy Ghost of God deals with your heart. And when God deals with your heart, you can repent, and through repentance, the Spirit will apply the precious blood and wash you as white as snow. Amen. Amen. There ain't no other way. I'm going to close in a few minutes. Y'all think about a song. I pray that these people will wake up before it's too late. This message to the Laodicean church reveals that the Lord is standing on the outside, knocking, seeking to be let in. God just wants to be let in. How gracious is God that has been kicked out of the church, kicked out of the nation, kicked out of our schools, and kicked out of our home to still stand outside and knock, willing to come in and make a change. 
And somebody just opened the door. How wonderful is God for that? What does the similarities of today reveal concerning this message? What's happened to the churches? What's happened? I believe we can agree that there's uh, there's compromise and condolence and failure to preach the word of God and willful separation from the whole counsel of God. Right there is probably what one of the worst things that's happened to the church. Willful separation from the whole counsel of God. Amen. Somebody said, I'm a Jesus only. You're not biblical. I'm Holy Ghost only. You're not biblical. I'm God only. You're not biblical today. Amen. So before you start dancing around and hollering and shouting, get your heart right with God and have something to dance about. Right. Amen. 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 We have separated ourselves from the whole counsel of God. And therefore, friend of mine, God is not working in our midst today. Amen. I said I'd hurry, didn't I? He stands at the door and the Bible says and knocks. We can be sure that the time will come when the knocking will cease. Amen. Just as sure as the Lord's knocking today, there's going to come a time when he'll quit knocking. Yeah. Amen. There ain't going to be no knocking when tribulation comes. Did you hear me? Amen. Amen. Think about that. Oh, I, I know there's going to be 144,000 that's sealed of God. I believe they'll evangelize. Uh, amen. Somebody said they'll evangelize the world. Well, I've, uh, I, I haven't found all of that in the Bible. I haven't uh, seen that. But I do believe that they'll be sent out to evangelize Israel because the tribulation is for Israel. Amen. To purge them to make a bride for God. I do believe they'll evangelize them and that their eyes will be opened and they'll begin to believe uh, that Messiah has already come and that his name is Jesus Christ Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 What about the rest of us? Well bless God you've already got the outpouring of the Spirit. You've had the movement of God. This country has had the great movement of God. The Bible has been brought and teached and preached and friend of mine I, I, God has done everything he can to get you to get right here today. Amen. Everything he can. Amen. But you got to understand that Israel's been out in the dark for a little while that you and I might be brought in. God, God has left them in the dark that you and I can, can hear the gospel and be saved, but there's going to come a time that the light's going to turn on for them. Amen. You better understand that. Amen. You say, well, I believe God will always give me a chance. He's giving you one tonight. If you die without God, you have nobody to blame but you. Right. Amen. Here tonight, I, let me say a few things. Many have said, what's happening to the world? The question has been asked, why can't hearts see the wrong? Why can't they turn away from the evil and see the ungodliness that's consuming the land? I'm going to tell you what I believe. I believe there's been many that has been turned over to a reprobate mind. A reprobate mind. That describes why there's so much moral corruptness. Why there's so many depraved and unprincipled people. They've been turned over to a reprobate mind. They have no reasoning. No understanding. Amen. Does that not fit the bill tonight? They'll not open the door of the church, neither the door of their hearts to welcome Jesus in. I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that what the Lord saw in the Laodicean church, he sees today. Everything he saw then, I believe he sees today. I believe we're living in the last church era. You don't have to. I believe that the Lord is seeking all to come to him. And all the while, time is running out. You got to live by your own convictions. But we're all going to stand before the Lord. Live by your own convictions. Don't live by mine. I got to live by my convictions. You live by yours. But we all got to come to understanding. We all stand before the Lord. And God's judgment will be just. Just. And there will be no questions on what he says. There's just no better time than right now to determine the fact, is it well with your soul? 
This thing's right between you and God. I know I've been a little draggy with this, but I've tried to bring some things out. I have a scratch to service. Amen. But there's nothing in Revelation to be afraid of unless you're planning on dying unprepared to meet God. Then you better be afraid. Amen. 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 Revelation, it doesn't scare the hearts of those that's prepared to meet Jesus. It just tells us to get ready and stay ready because the Lord is coming, just like he said today. I wonder, as they play, if there's anybody here that wants to pray while you come tonight, are you seeing what the Word of God is revealing? Are you seeing a world that is plummeting headlong into hell? Are you seeing hearts that's growing cold and hard? Do you have loved ones tonight that refuse to accept the truth? Maybe they mock at you. Maybe they laugh at you tonight because you're trying to live a Christian life. Don't give up. Don't let the devil make you get so aggravated that you quit praying for them. Your prayers is important tonight. If you got a prayer you need to pray, come. We're going to pray with the audience and you if you come tonight. Can you not see that our world is a self-portrait of what God has written to this church of the Laodiceans? Can you not see that we're living in that very era of time? Can you not see that? If you can't, you're just not looking tonight. I pray you'll see. I pray you'll get burdened. I pray you become a caring heart. Not only for yourself, but for all of those who are unprepared to meet God. You might be the only message that they ever read or ever see. Your testimony might be the changing point in somebody's life. But it can't help nobody if you don't testify. It can't help nobody if you're not a witness. So it's all up to you tonight. Let us pray. Father, Lord, take these few words tonight. I pray you'd get glory out of it. Realizing tonight, God, we've stumbled along. You see, I know God, the devil, would have done anything he could if I just wouldn't have preached on that. Oh, the world don't want to hear it. But that don't mean they don't need to. Churches don't want to hear that they need to wake up. But God, they need to. Hearts have grown so self-satisfied. And, and God, they're just like those in the hell to see in church. They're neither hot nor cold. And, and they're not impressing you. But in fact, God, you're spewing them out of your mind. My prayer tonight is, God, that we'd open our heart to the leadership of the Spirit of God. That we'd seek wisdom. That we'd seek spiritual boldness. God, that we carry forth our cross with honor tonight. With honor tonight. That we'd be proud to be called a Christian. Thank you for saving an old wretched sinner like me. Now I pray you'd save someone tonight. Somewhere, somebody would ask you to save them. Would you do it, God? Would you move in the homes and the families? Oh, what are we going to leave the children? God, if we don't get more earnest in what we're doing, what are we going to leave the children? Help us, God, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, we are. He's coming back to me. Do y'all believe he's coming back? Amen. Amen. He's coming for How many of you got someone you know that's lost tonight? Just lift your hand. I wonder if you just bow your head and lift your hand and, and just ask the Lord from your heart, Lord, deal with them. Oh, Lord, save them, I pray. And if there's anything I can do or say, help me to be willing to do that 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 soul might have everlasting life. Would you do that? 
Amen. If it's well in your soul, would you just give praise to the Lord? Would you say, thank you, Lord, for saving me? Amen. Give him praise in his house tonight. Man, thank you for your attention. Thank you for your prayers in the church and for you that are praying for us out there on the Facebook. May God bless you tonight and touch you and help you. And we're honored to get to be in your place of watching. <laughs> Amen. I used to, I, I say sometimes your place of listening. But I guess you're doing both. Uh, place of watching and listening. We're thankful. May God bless you. If the Lord lets us live and the sun comes up, Again and again, we'll be here at 7.15 Sunday morning trying to bring the Word of God. So you pray for us until then, and may God bless you. Good night.